Florida is one of the most biodiverse states in America. But there's a threat to this natural balance. New animals, once from far away, have managed to upset the established order. They are invasive species and they threaten the livelihood of Florida's ecosystems. An invasive species is one that is introduced to a new ecosystem by human activity. Unlike non-native species, invasive species damage their new environment. In Miami, one invasive animal has become both a privilege and a nuisance. Peafowl. These birds are originally from India, but were brought as pets in the 1970s. Today, they are found all around Florida. The highest concentration of peafowl is here in Coconut Grove. Warm climate and lush vegetation make it an ideal home. With no natural predators, this invasive species has found an easy home in the urban jungle. Spring is the start of mating season. Peacocks use their colourful plumage to attract females. The more extravagant the plumage, the more likely they are to mate. This young male is trying his luck. Preening helps keep his feathers clean and upright. He's been noticed. She's not interested. Some residents enjoy the ornamental birds, others can't stand them. Their droppings are slightly corrosive and can transmit disease through bacteria. They scratch cars, block driveways and ruin gardens. Communities are trying to reach an agreement on how to control the population. Listen to this. What? This is so beautiful to me. Just listening to this, it's like I, I'm living in, a, in India, in jungle, you know. You don't hear that anywhere else. That's the beauty of Coconut Grove. <coughs> I know the person who brought it in, and this guy brought a, a couple as a pet, not knowing these guys can fly everywhere. <laughs> they couldn't keep them. And next thing you know, there are like hundreds of them. <laughs> There were very few. You barely could see them walking down the streets. Now they're all over the place. Are they invasive? No, I don't think so. Peacocks can change ecosystem here. What do they do? You know, I, I, I really don't believe that they're gonna cause problem. You know? I have not heard anyone complain about they got some sort of disease by being near the peacocks. I feed them all the time because there's so many of them and I don't think there's enough out there for them to eat. They even have a park down the street called Peacock Park. It's becoming part of our lives here, you know. A peacock's beauty has always helped it survive. 
some invasive species go beyond simply being an inconvenience. They put other animal populations at risk. Florida has the biggest wetland ecosystem in the Northern Hemisphere. 3,500 square miles of subtropical wilderness is home to a great variety of life. Over 750 animal species live in the Everglades alone. Here lives one animal that can decimate native populations. This is a tegu, a South American reptile that has managed to thrive in Florida's similar habitat. They can grow up to four feet long and feed primarily on the eggs of birds and other reptiles. They came here as pets, but were released by a breeding operation in 2005. They now threaten the livelihood of native animals by eating their young. Local hunter Rodney Irvin knows this all too well. I am a fourth generation Floridian. The environment is important to me because it's my home. Uh, the plants, the animals, the water, all things that I've grown up with. Because of the threat they pose, it is legal to kill them. They are a serious threat to our natives, but that doesn't mean they have to be killed. It's not the tegu's fault. I catch tegus for a living. This is what I do full time. Catching tegus isn't always easy. They live in dense grass and are able to climb, burrow and swim. I capture them using live animal traps. As an animal that eat eggs, they have the capacity to take out an entire generation of our natives in one feeding. Eventually this will cause a serious disruption in the native population. Cameras help Rodney map population density. I remove them from the environment and I sell them. It is a, a business, um, fairly unique. <laughs> uh, when I sell them to different parts of the country, I don't necessarily have to worry about someone in Minnesota releasing their tegu. That tegu is not going to find another tegu in the wild and start a super population like we have here anywhere else. An exotic solution to an exotic problem. Catching reptiles is difficult, but what about animals that live in the biggest environment of all? This is a lionfish, a venomous fish native to Africa and the Indo-Pacific. Genetic research has shown that lionfish were first introduced here in the 1990s. It's pretty safe to say that they've already had an effect on fisheries. They're not selective in what they eat at all. So they're eating snappers and groupers that are important to us commercially, but they're also eating other fish like parrotfish and surgeonfish when they're small and in their juvenile stages. These fishes are extremely important to the reef habitat because they keep macroalgae grazed down. Without grazing down macroalgae, those plants essentially can overgrow a reef and it goes from a coral dominated habitat to an algal dominated habitat. When it's an algal dominated environment, it's no longer growing 
and they will actually start to bioerode back down to just a benign flat habitat. In an environment like a coral reef, people come to see it because of all that beautiful biodiversity. If you start to shift that reef towards a very benign environment, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of money in tourist dollars and also a resource for all the people depending on the reef for food. Every year, reef tourism generates over $100 million. So what I'm doing here in, in my lab is we're trying to put together a growth curve for the uh, invasive population here in South Florida. And what we, we'd like to show is that lionfish aren't as sedentary as I think they're, they're believed to be. And this is important for understanding the effects that they're having on their environment. They also taste great. We're trying to make a demand for them, or make, make an actual fishery for them so people can go to the grocery store and say, hey, there's lionfish for sale, that's actually pretty good, let's buy some. If humans want to have that impact, they can. It's really just a matter of making the motivation. My hope for South Florida and for all of Florida is that we, we don't let the pressure up, that we continue to recognize this as a significant problem, we continue to appreciate the native ecosystems and the native organisms that we have here, and we continue to try to protect them. We've already brought these problems on the ecosystems we have here, and we are the best solution as well. There might still be hope. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, or FWC, wants to rally public support. Across the state, the FWC holds events to educate the public and round up animals. Today, Kim Titterington is volunteering for the FWC's Exotic Pet Amnesty Program. Uh, South Florida is the invasive species capital of the world. So, you know, having these kind of events here and promoting awareness is in entirely important. It's really, really important. It's Exotic Pet Amnesty Day, and Pet Amnesty Day is an opportunity for people to surrender pets that they may no longer be able to keep that are exotic. It gives them the opportunity to turn them in with no questions asked. Since its inception in 2006, the Amnesty program has received over 3,000 non-native animals. Unique pets, animals from all over the world, are surrendered. A lot of times people, um, they get real nervous or they're scared that they're going to get in trouble. And so if they have something, even if they really care about it, they may just release it into the wild. Or they just think, oh, we'll be happy over here in this pond. But then, of course, that animal ends up either not faring very well in the environment, or two, it actually becomes uh, a part of the environment, and that's when we end up with invasive species. Education is the key point in all of this, and the more that people know um, that even this opportunity is here, I think the better. We may never know the damage this work has prevented. Florida's invasive species are here to stay. But nature loves equilibrium. Eventually, these ecosystems will adjust to the newcomers. But at what cost? <laughs>